Well, in 2002, I was told by, uh, by a physician that I had, a, had a, the beginnings of a decline in my kidney function. And at the time, they didn't really know why that was and never really did conclude what it might have been, although it was probably a number of factors, including hypertension and uh, medication I was taking for anti-inflammatories. I, I did, I was doing okay. And then as time went on, you know, your, your kidneys don't improve. You know, it's not a, a organ that is able to regenerate. So they continue to decline. And I got to a point where I was getting really very, very ill. In 2015, it, I became aware when I went to the doctor that uh, my kidney function had very much declined. It was really in, in a very serious zone. So I went back to uh, the kidney specialist and was evaluated. And uh, I was in really very bad shape. I was actually in, uh, in the beginnings of heart failure. I had no idea that that was the case but I was in the beginnings of heart failure. You know, I had, uh, you know, continuing weakness, difficulty in maintaining myself as an individual. I was evaluated and it was recommended that I get a kidney transplant because otherwise my health was in pretty good shape, but I needed a kidney transplant. At the time, I thought that I could continue working and get that kidney transplant, but it turned out that that was not the case. I ended up becoming more sick than I thought I would be. The physical effects, uh, the major ones are tiredness, tremendous tiredness, and also a little haziness in my thinking. I've always uh, prided myself in, in my intelligence, and I don't have quite the same recall that I used to have. It's there, but it takes a little longer. Well, I didn't want to do this. I realized that uh, the importance of going on dialysis. Uh, dialysis, uh, peritoneal dialysis, which is something you can do at home. I do nine hours a day, and it enables you to preserve whatever kidney function that you do have. It enables you to stay even until you have the opportunity for a uh, transplant. In um, my situation, you know, I have ups and downs because it's hard to maintain, uh, you know, a good balance of all of your electrolytes and you have to maintain good uh, nutrition and sometimes that's hard to do because you're not hungry. It takes away your, your appetite. Uh, the dialysis is, uh, well, first of all, they have to put a, a port into your abdomen and it's through that port that uh, liquid would circulate amongst your uh, intestines and enable you to have a transfer of, uh, of uh, excess uh, body waste. And that happens over a process of nine hours in, uh, as I do it uh, with a, uh, what they call a recycler machine that constantly cycles that liquid through your body. And it's about, oh, 1,100 milliliters of liquid that's, that's cycled through. I'm not gonna complain because there are many people that have to go to a dialysis center and have this done over a three and four hour period, maybe three times a, a, a week. And that's very, very hard on your body. The reason why I chose to do this is it's easier on your body and it's uh, easier to manage and less expensive. I get very, very tired. I, I, I had underestimated what the impact would be. I thought I could uh, you know, keep this up because I was always a strong person, but I get very tired and uh, it's, it's not unusual for me sometimes to fall asleep before I am able to complete my dialysis because I just get so tired. You have a half hour to respond if they invite you to accept a kidney. And I've only been called once. And it turned out that that uh, fellow died, so I was not able to get that kidney. But you have a half hour to respond, and they're able to use any kind of kidney that is available. Uh, some people choose to do a living donation, which is really desirable, but uh, that's a lot to ask of people. 
A, a lot of the donations come from uh, cadaver kidneys. Uh, for me, uh, I have to be constantly available by phone so I can answer, answer the phone for any call that I might get. I, I have to be open to a consideration of what, you know, what organ might be available. There are some that are less desirable than others. And I've indicated to them that I'm willing to accept nearly, you know, really a wide variety of organs. I would advise them to call University of Nebraska Transplant Center at 800-401-4444. And, uh, you know, I would encourage anyone that to make plans for your organs when you do die, because you don't want to take them to, to uh, the great beyond. There's no use for them there. But many, many people need those organs now. And, you know, we're blessed with two kidneys. And uh, if you're able to and healthy enough and you choose to donate a kidney, that is a wonderful thing. Absolutely wonderful because it does not, it, uh, what they'll do is they uh, analyze the capability of someone to, to give a, a donation like that, make sure that you're in good health and it won't bother you at all. And then uh, that kidney then can be used for you or for others. You know, there's a need, everybody has a need, and who am I to say that I need it more than others? All I can say is that I have so much that I would like to do in my life. I've, able, I've been able to accomplish a great deal in public health. I, I would like to be able to continue on in, uh, in uh, doing some other things. I have a good 10 years if I'm able to get a kidney transplant. If I'm not able to, I'll have five years of declining life.